Hello, we are really happy to welcome you here at this event. This is the Meet the Poet event, and today we're meeting the Yakut uh, poet. Yelizaveta Mikalkin is Yakut poetess, is a member of the Union of Writers of Yakut, and a member of the Russian Writers, which is actually a great honor for an author writing in Yakut. She, she is also a member of Ichi Literature Association Yakutia. And we also have an event a poetess who is uh, which is Daria Neseni, and she also won the international prize, which is Ostana for writing in a native language. We'd like to welcome our speakers today. And today we are currently talking about the literature of Yakut peoples. And Yakut uh, is a kind of a title nation. Uh, Elizabeth, could you turn off your mic at the moment? Uh, certainly, uh, Yakut is a title language in Yakut. In Yakut literature is really rich. We can only say now that's probably one of the richest literature in the Russian Far East. However, the Yakut language is not the only one we have there in Yakutia. We also have some other Yakut languages like Evenki, Evan, Chokchi, Yokagi. During the, our last meeting, we were talking about the Yokagi language, which is actually can consist of two languages. And so we can really imagine ourselves at a multinational, multi-ethnic, multi-language Yakutia is. And uh, this uh, mo and we also would like also to tell you that the Yakut authors and writers can certainly uh, play certainly a leading role. Uh, may, right, a lot of uh, points, there are a lot of uh, novels, some of them are also turned to be in movies. And today we're talking about uh, poems. Hey, Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth is today with us, and she will tell us about uh, her poems. What is, are the main topics of your poets? What is the importance of your national or native component in it? Uh, good afternoon, dear friends. I would like to welcome you from very cold Yakutia. It is minus 40 degrees Celsius here. And I really very hope, happy, but I also want you to introduce other uh, guests because I uh, certainly uh, no uh, diary, but I don't know other guests. But as we are here, we can certainly talk to other people here. So um, if you have also other people here, usually we have only the technical stuff here, where there are only three participants of this midi point event. You, Daria, and me. Uh, as for my creative way, as for my writing way, I can say one thing that everyone, every writer was born in his or her childhood because I started writing and speaking when I was a child. And I also wrote a lot of fairy tales of poems, first of all, in my first or native language. We can also understand what are the reasons why I started writing the first fairy tales and poems in Russian as well. But today I would like to talk about Yakut, about my genes. If we talk something, that is something for what uh, actually your parents were doing or had this man occupation. I was uh, actually not a really open child, but I used to read a lot. And I used to read a lot of Russian Soviet literature. Probably it had a certain I'm mean, absolutely sure it had a significant impact on me. And if you really remember my first uh, poems, I used to actually to talk about the Russian color there. You certainly understand it. We also had some symbols there. That was the symbols of the time I was actually growing in. And in in the 1990s or in the series, 
we had in our republic, if you could, a, a kind of culture explosion based on our national native way. So I started dealing with my native Yakut poems. Uh, I started reading Alexei Kulakovsky, Alam Safronov. I started to read this really significant and long text, which really made a revolution in my soul. And this text had a significant impact on me as a person. I just had something what really opened inside of me. And then I started writing, and I really started writing in my first or native language, which is Yakut. And I didn't know at that time that my grandfather and his father were actually those who used to tell stories. They were the real good stories storytellers, because I used to grow up with the Russian and translated literature. I used to read Tom Sawyer, Jules Verne, and the books of other authors. But when I managed to read this really significant text with this beautiful definitions out of our epos, because if we'll I look at um, our language. It is really very beautiful. It has a lot of means ex of expression. It was a significant surprise for me. And at a certain moment of time, I decided to write in my own language. I just uh, thought that I do write for myself. I was writing about love, about my homeland. When I was studying at university, I was also uh, writing something based on the Old Testament. I, I used to write in Yakut even at that time. Yeah, I was writing about Salome, about her uncle. And when I was young and certainly had a significant impact on me, and sometimes I used to mix it up. Sometimes I was writing in Russian, sometimes in Yakut. And once upon a time, I came to a le lecture or presentation of Yakut literature. Unfortunately, we didn't have many classes or lectures in Yakut literature. I used to be pretty late for these lectures, and I was quite often blamed for it. And I also got a task to write Uh, to write a paperwork on Yakut uh, poems, and I chose the Alam Pass. And uh, when I was when I was finished this work, I came here, uh, and the teacher asked for Elizaveta Migalkina. I raised my hand. Oh, the girl, which is which is always late. Okay, what are you doing here at this? faculty of philology. Why are you studying the Russian and foreign literature? Because the Yakut literature needs you. And it was quite an, something that really opened my eyes. And I understood at that moment of time that probably the global and Russian literature enriched me, gave me a significant background, which I'm currently having. And probably I had to write in one language, and this language should be my native one. And I said a significant thank you to Valentina at this faculty who really managed to open my eyes. And I went back to my hometown, and I started actually writing first poems. And unfortunately, I was able to publish my first poems in our a district poem collection book, and occasionally these poems uh, came to the hands of Natalia 
Har Lamkin, who was actually the chair of the Yukut right, Union of Yukut Writers, and she invited me to the seminar of young Yukut writers. And we have also Union of Yukut Writers, and this union leads a really very good work in order to develop young Yakut writers every two years we run the seminars of young writers. I was found them and oh my god I was afraid to come to Yakuts to the capital and actually the shades in my hands were actually flittering and Sava Tarasov uh, the author of our Anthony Republican Anthem. We also had a lot of well-known poets and poetesses, and the many young girls were actually bursting into tears because usually we had got a question what we were doing there. Certainly, I was actually a bit nervous, but it turned to be the fact that my poems were actually recommended to be published uh, and my first poem, poems were published in a book in a collection book the stars are calling i think it was in 2006 if i'm not mistaken and until 2013 i got another book of poems and these were actually my free thoughts if I can really translate it in this way and 2013 I was I became a member of the Union of Russian Writers and it was quite a quite complicated process because Natalia Lampia asked me actually to uh, provide a word by word translation of my poems and it was very difficult because I was actually uh, this work was uh, could be compared to the delivery of a child because my poems were my babies and I had actually to redo them into European or Russian manner and I think it was a quite a complicated process and uh, I, I asked actually uh, my friend Simon, because he was actually a master student, and I asked him uh, to translate my poems into Russian. He did the trans Russian translation, and I actually I used to cry over uh, these translated poems for a couple of hours because male view, a man's view on women, on women's poems was different probably it was also due to the fact that our language has so many layers that one expression can be translated into three different sentences with a different sense at all and i will give you an example now <clears throat> То есть стихотворение все начиналось с со звука х с х х, но это не имеет никакого значения. Так, то есть я сказала. The poem starts with this sound, but it does not matter at all. So you left tears on the snow, but this can be translated as follows: You left me your drawings in the snow. You left me. The marks on the snow are you you jumped and excuse me you left your physiological how to put this marks I should say do you understand what I'm driving at you see you see my point and these two lines were translated in a different way, not the way I met them to sound. I'm saying this just to highlight the fact 
that literal translation is very difficult. Sometimes the original is ambiguous. Natalia Ivanovna went to Moscow to present our poems, presented them to the attention of the board of a commission. This is how the procedure works as long as national poetry and concern. Thank you. Wrapping up with this introduction to your poems, could you please read several verses of Sakala, if you could? We now have the Alanha event. Let me quote. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Elizaveta. Let's now address Daria, a young Evenki poet. Elizaveta, could you please mute for now? Please mute your microphone. Daria represents a very powerful, eminent family of the Evenki people. Please share some facts about your works and your family who works to the benefit of the Evenki people. Hello, good afternoon. It's my privilege and honor to be here today. I was born in Sibiankul, a small Evenki village at the, in one of the mountain areas at the crest of the mountain. Virtually one person out of three in our village writes poems in their native Yakut language. This small village is home of a number of Evenki, renowned, well-known Evenki authors known in Russia, across the nation as well, Mr. Lamotsky, the author of the first novel, The Spirit of the Land, the first Yakut language novel, Mr. Krivashapkin, a well-known pe people's poet and writer. He's also the author of the first Evenki novel. The Evenki language is on the verge of extinction. As far as I know, in Russia and in the whole world, this is probably the only novel written in a language on the verge of extinction. Vasily Kimikinov Bargachan is also a major poet. He has plenty of poetry written. The translator and poet Dmitry Krivoshapkin Nimkolan. He translated the epic. Yurkun bought uh, the audacious in Russian. He translated works of other Russian and Yakult classic authors. And we have also a plethora of other writers whose books are available in print. A few facts about my family to begin with. We can say that our family has several poets. My brother, Mr. Krivoshapkin, this year he became a member of the Russian Union of Writers. He writes, he's a writer and translator in the Ivanki language. He writes poetry, he writes prose in Russian. 
He works at the Institute of Native Languages. He is a graduate of the Far Eastern Federal University, major in Northern Language Linguistics. Reading is a big thing in our family. Thanks to our parents who read quite a lot, retelling and telling them some popular folklore, fables. Father would read to us all the time. They didn't have a specific linguistic background. My father is a tractor driver by profession, but he is keen on reading. And he was our role model. So we spent all the time we had in the library. Our sister is also a poet. She is only starting out in poetry. And I think that soon enough we will hear from her. When it comes to my very first poetry, just like Elisaveta, I started off in the same way. That was early during my school years. This is as uh, early as I learned how to write. That was grade one or grade two. During my school years and my student years, I wrote, and it was at my first or second year in the university that I spoke at one of the university conferences. This is when we met Elisaveta as well as a number of other young authors. From then on, on an annual basis, I started participating in this meeting on literature as an author, and lately I've been assisting in organizing this event. I'm a librarian by profession, which helps me quite a lot. Jointly with partners and colleagues, we make an effort to support authors. We organize contests for young authors. Lately, we started organizing meetings at the library under the auspices of the Writers' Union to discuss our works in literature. In 2013, I published the very first uh, book of poems, my co first collection. I also published my works in periodicals. This the the collection of modern pieces of national literature. This is what it looks like. These were poems translated into Russian in the Yakut language and Italian. This is the collection. This is what it looks like. Let me read to you the following poem. The Russian translation is also available here. I'm going to read the poem in the Venka language and it will be followed by the Russian translation. <laughs> Би и кев буктиків де гелден, а кмудолчидан би мергемо, а кмудолчидан би торемо. А і ке і не ніл би сітен, мергемо нерил бун дьонікан. Я галу інгам тан онкел бун, кумарапу дьонікан. Дют хатлан, хо і ке кумача куптен, челе дюр акал, екел, ночікел. Galerem hunu nodu kalbo, galerem hinu kumarapo. I v perivodi Irini Yermakova, Yetstva. This is a translation by Irini Yermakova, Childhood. Pesni mai damoi uletiat, pust maiu reč uslishit sestra. The white wings of crane takes my dreams away. Let my father hear my thoughts. So many pleasant times and minutes we can recollect, light enlightens my soul. We see our tears dropping. What a pleasure to live in the village. 
the kids in the yard, like a strong, united, close-knit family, brothers and sisters. I'm missing my childhood. I miss you so. Let me also quote another poem dedicated to my family. I'm going to read in the Venki language and will be followed by translation into the Yakut language. Yerin inengi biddekan, agdirilkan udan tikran, dekini juf acadukon ingem nikan ilatam. Janil bu mehawas nanyam sin, gorinuk minu hokul kenyin. Janil bu nyam sitoral nan mindu engif bovatan. Mergen jur de bisiklay, chela jur bimi mangchijit, agdirilkan inengil bu. Tun karibi janil bo, mut binit ang si adanye, nyultim ang nikan yeltenye, ngari keda nyam si keda, kutnyun omatto. Binit hotarman ngarin holy gagarporin, datlal kamda sa odambi orang ceributan dolcime, omatto ang si bijip, chalavan mut mangcijip, abgar build de bijal bo, nisalkan build de janil bo. Jallah bolum bar jonum. Это на якутском языке. Күнне қаллағы әміске. This is the Yakut version. Әтін нәғ ардақ құралатта. Сағар сир соғыттан. Соғытығын тоңы тұрдым. Ол әрәрі қан ұру бар жонум. Әхігі сүрек қыт сылаға. Ұрақтан мейгін сылытар. Әхігі мейға тапталғыт. Илгер ити тұнынан. Маннік әтін нәғ ардақ. Олақы өрі әлбәқ, олақ бұд әндірдәк айанын бірге бола мұттылу ябыд. Сүрәқ біт бәбейді біргелер, сүрәқ біт сылаға біргелер. Жаллағ болым бар жаным. И также позвольте прочитать стихотворение на авенском языке. Let me also read another poem in the Evenki language on our mother tongue. Дукум таңникан. Колам да муха воттан, муха му, нин тел бидионикан, онкул, энгилкен оваттан. Хоч хов кидук келеттем, хутал бу, энг митуараман хадатан. И хуми, ава хал бихап гоникен, энгикен харкен гондатан. Хя кита нин тел кен биме, ай чилаттан. Бей, муун мири биневен, балдача торами хари биме, ман сич бодал дуй илаттан. Хадун и рафтара в дём каддам. Пеневу джугарма джингер каддам. Кумал бу, аваде маргал кан биха катан. Мин дук хулак, не халкан бай атча бижин. Таракам муон миру джулдадун. Таман му атча бижин. Хуркал буда нин талкан, мангсич и худир. Ховки хиндук холгалаттам. Тодатли, торутли. Так джен такан. Karina, thank you, Darina, Ria. I have a question. What strikes me is that you enumerated the event in Yakut authors. They represent your local area. Speaking of the event language, it is Birozovka and Sibankeke, the two the most represented locations as far as the Evenki language concerned. And this applies to the whole Far East area, not only to Yakutia as a region. How do the Umanhin people are able to uh, maintain and conserve their language, even though they normally have a good command of Yakut? How do you make it to remain trilingual? The Evenki people, the Evenki people, перешли на uh, якутский язык. Uh, как это удается uh, вашим? Якут, how uh, at your location, how do you maintain these three languages? How do you make it to remain trilingual? Looks like Daria, looks like Daria is expecting a technical issue. Let's uh, address Elizaveta. What is your take? This is my native place. The Yakut people 
live in the valley normally. And here we talk about the Verkoyansk range. And in this area, people maintain the traditional livelihoods like deer farming, traditional arts and crafts, and the language is maintained. The Yunkerle location Daria comes from, as well as her family, they still practice traditional deer farming. There are elders who still capable to do this corduroy and deer skin items. The traditional livelihoods are su sustained, so is the livelihood, and they have thus been supporting their language. Areas while where they have issues with employment, deer farming, social problems, socialization of the young people, indeed this is where they have problems in these areas. This is a very painful topic. Thank you, Daria. Thank you for getting back. Elisabetta, thank you for your comment. We discussed the reasons why the residents of Sibakiela are able to maintain the Evenki language, even though the Yakut is vastly represented in the village. Most residents are trilingual. They speak Russian, Yakut, and Evenki. Why didn't the Yakut language offset the Evenki language? Elisaveta believes it's about the traditional livelihoods, but for the Evenki, there's room. They practice deer farming. The Aldan is for the Venki, but they adopted the Yakut language. And this transition has been going on for a long time now. According to the statistics, out of the 38,000 Evenki people, 21,000 speak the Saka language. How does the Sabanquel people are able to maintain their language? There is some interference going on into your version, your flavor of the Venki language, but most importantly, you maintain your native language, your mother tongue. I think it is uh, worth mentioning. Uh, we can uh, certainly uh, learn Ivan not only in school, but also in the preschool. It is almost everywhere because also families who were speaking Ivan, even my family, because my family, speaks Ivan. If we can also uh, can talk Ivan and a family, but you are able also speak Russian to any other people, even being children. Uh, everything depends on ma, your education and your family. However, the world is a matter of fact that during the Soviet night, these languages of indigenous people, including Yakut, the languages were actually bitten out of children's mind. It was actually forbidden to speak this language. However, our ladies, our elders decided to protect the language and also the deer production. And even the hungry in the 90s, uh, this deer production was something what actually really helped our my native language to survive. Uh, thank you very much. Could you also tell me one more thing? Out of the prototype of views on heroes and characters used in the Yakut or event literature, what do you have in? In your creation, where do you have this actual traditional part which you usually accommodate in your poems? That's a question for both of you. I think there was a kind of a, a red line in my poems, which is the love to my native speech, to my native language, to my family. This is the main topic. And Elizabeth, and now the question is to you. Uh, we're, we're talking about the epic structure I mentioned. 
for example, the poems, poem form, poetic forms of our app uh, can really have the following form with it, all this, all the lines can style start with the same sound and is how I can also do. I can even write any kind of a rap and I can also start actually a lines from every single sound from L or H. Uh, and I do have uh, more vocals in my poems if I write in a more faster way. If it is actually not a more tragical way, I do have actually more solid sounds. And there is a kind of a sound, if I may, a vocal sound writing for poems, which is actually kept in our year code poems. But not all poems really stick to this uh, traditional four line principle. Because in the past, this kind of a Poem writing forms were pretty popular. As for the epic heritage, whether we have it. I would like to tell you one more thing because there are some really very important things which I probably don't really know, but I still Still, they have roots out of our traditional beliefs. There are also many real references to these uh, ideas and characters out of our myths and our belief and religion. And I think it is um, not really easy to talk about these kind of things because when I don't really understand what I am writing about, uh, I usually refer to my teachers. And Anatoly Pavlov uh, can also tell me, you, for example, mentioned this kind of star or this kind of star system where the spirits of old ladies live and these spirits they protect and they guard the northern sky this is actually out of our myths i have i rely really on my intuition i also do have a lot of information which is actually in my genome in my genes i, I do know it out of myself that's not a secret that's really brilliant the rear do you have a, any certain favorite way like assonance by Elisaveta, or do you have any other language mean you usually use in your poems? I'm not really able to tell you exactly in what kind of actually images of views to use in your poems. Usually the spirit of fire and have half kiss and the image of half kiss. As for the other images, it could be birds, animals. And how do you really feel? What is the impact of Yakut language on even language? Well, first of all, it could be the melody, this sound vocals like ooh, and, and how can you also compare your own language, native language, which is actually has been developed for a long time in the Yakut language background. I think it is a real worth mentioning that the even languages is very rich And we uh, do have a car around 20 dialects in the even language because we used also to com communicate with the even people in Magadan, in Kamchatka, and sometimes we use different words which we don't really get uh, right how they're used in the other part. Sometimes some of the event can use U, Shri, or Hu, and, and also it depends. 
on on the impact of neighboring people. Ну, в любом случае, все равно взаимо In any case, this is a kind of a mutual enrichment of neighboring cultures. This is something what really takes place. It's a really natural process. And I think um, that's it was a great fortune that we had to meet actually the poet has a writing in Yakut and in event language in both cases we can only say that's the line tradition this line won't be stopped and we can only hope that the literature and the language identity of these peoples of this ethnic groups will be kept and preserved and I can like to really thank you for the job, for the work you have been doing all your life long. And we wish you and your relatives to speak your first language. Thank you. Thank you, Daria and Karina. It was a really nice. And I would like to find out whether it would be possible to get a link where you can also refer to our refer. After this event, we will send you the link and I would like to say goodbye to you. Goodbye, thank you very much and all the best to you.